Hi all, I am Puni, working as an assistant professor in the Department of Industrial Biotechnology. I'm handling the subject called Bioprocess Economics and Plan Design. And I'm going to take the topic of uh, optimization technique in which we are going to see about the linear and the dynamic programming and what are the various strategies that has been used in this case of this technique. So uh, before getting into the topic, we must be known in any industries if we take like our uh, uh, in any industries like a pharma industries or chemical or any bioprocess industries if you take and the optimization is most defined one the optimization of the particular process is to be uh, formulated to be a defined one in all case of the industries wherever the industries which have been able to produce a product by carrying out the process Okay, so here in this case, when you talk about an optimization, it doesn't involve in a screening or in a uh, production or in a quantification or in your purification technique. Okay, so this is not a basic screening technique. And when you talk about an optimization, the optimization is said to be how much amount of the product can be produced in a maximum yield by utilizing the source of a various substrates or the substrate from which can be derived from the various sources. So uh, the first term it implies, we'll see what you mean by the optimize and we'll be seeing what are the various types of optimization techniques we do have and what are the various cases and how it can be improved in a, by using your various strategies we will see. So first we'll see about what do you mean by the optimize. So when you talk about an optimize, it is defined as to make a perfect and effective and a functional as possible, which means that if, if we take anything like a, in any product, if it is of a pharma, we take it as a pharma product in the form of a drugs. Okay, so that drug, it has to be a perfect and effective and a functional one for treating of any disease or for treating of any illness. Right. So when you talk about a bioprocess industries, if you are producing a, a vitamins or if you are producing a, a carbohydrates or you are producing a, any form of a sugar, like let us take an example of a sugar. So the sugar has to be a very perfect and an effective manner, which has to be uh, doing the particular functional role. The same way when you talk about the uh, petrochemical industries, the petrochemical industries, whatever the product they have been produced, that has to be a very effective in a manner. So if we do it in a lab also, if you are producing any product, that product has to be a very effective and efficient in a functional manner. So if the term optimize is defined as to make a perfect, effective and a function as possible. Okay, so here uh, we can say, so we'll see what are the various ways in which your uh, optimization defines. So here when we talk about an optimization, it is not the screening technique as I have told you earlier. It is said to be a maximum product formation, how much it has been formed from the substrate that has been utilized when we are giving them for a particular product formation. So in other way, we can say that it can be used as, oh, sorry, it can be uh, defined as a quantitative formulation that has to be qualitatively determined. Qualitatively determined in the sense, quantitative in the sense, how much amount of a product we are going to produce in a maximum form by your, that has to be in a qualitatively determined. This is in that particular quality, it has to be in a good quality, it has to be there. Okay, so when you talk about our next optimization, in the case of a pharmaceutical, it refers to the changing in a one variable at a time so as to obtain a solution of a problematic formulation. So here it can be defined in the case of a, so here in this case, if we define about the pharmaceutical, uh, <clears throat> if we are changing a one variable at a particular time, what is the solutions we are going to bring for that particular problematic formulation we are going to see. Okay, so the next is uh, here uh, the pharmaceutical. So, which means that what do you mean by that in the sense if you have found uh, any uh, formulation or any minute excipients, even if we found that it's said to be your, <laughs> if you are saying that is said to be your uh, not in a co corporate manner, so that that is not in an incorporated with the drug chemical that has to be uh, formulated in such a way so that we have to obtain a problem for that particular solution 
okay solution for that particular problem so that is said to be your in the case of a comma cuticle so the next two it can also be defined as a process of finding the best way of using the existing resources while taking into the account of all the factor that influences decisions in any experiment which means that so here it is not only involved in the formation of uh, a product formation by utilizing a single substrate it also it also includes what are the various factors which are making or acting on the particular substrate for a particular specific product to be formed so not only the substrate which will be involved in the product formation we have various factors that also influences in the case of a substrate that has been influenced for a product formation okay so here um, so uh, overall the optimization is not a screening technique it is defined as to make the product in an effective and functional as much as possible in a perfect manner that has to be done for any product if we are processing is carried out for a product formation that has been utilizing the maximum substrate for the product in a larger quantitative uh, manner as well as in a qualitative manner so the next we'll move on to the classical optimization technique so here when we talk about the optimization technique we'll see the various uh, techniques that has been used so the first one is a classical optimization technique is uh, is technique which are useful in finding the optimum solution which means that what is the maximum solution we are going to produce in the particular product from utilizing of the particular substrate so in and continuous or in a differentiable functions which means that what are the various factors which are influencing in the thing so we are going to make that factor as a uh, non variable one or we are going to make it as a variable function so how much amount of the uh, maximum product we are going to take it or produce from a minimum source of a substrate that has been used for the particular production so uh, the classical optimization technique is said to be a optimal solution we are going to find in the maximum concentration we are going to make by utilizing those uh, continuous or a variable variables okay so here in this case these are the analytical methods and make use of a differential calculus in locating the optimum solution so here uh, this is said to be the analytical technique so analytical method in the sense we are going to analyze whether this has been uh, qualitatively or quantitatively sufficient for the particular product to be formed by the utilization of the substrate or we are going to analyze what is the uh, composition of that so by making your use of the differential calculus in locating the optimum solution so we are going to make whether the product is a qualitatively acceptable or a quantitatively acceptable so it has to be both if we talk about optimization it has to be um, compromise both the thing qualitatively as well as your quantitatively so over here we are going to make use of a calculus to locate the optimum solution for it mm -hmm. the classical methods has a limited scope in a practical application since it involves an objective functions which are not continuous as well as a differentiable one so which means that it is it has a limited scope in the sense it has a disadvantage because it has a practical constraints like uh, in finding your continuous and uh, differentiable functions okay so aid the study of this classical technique of optimization form a basis for developing most of the numerical technique that have been evolved into the advanced technique most suitable to today's practical problem but this or uh, classical optimization uh, technique the name itself will indicates it's a classical form that is the oldest one we can say so the oldest one it is said to be the formation of a basis for developing the uh, most of the problems to whatever we do have for those problems we can derive the solutions for it so what are the problems that has been existing today that has been <clears throat> solution that has been arise due to the particular problem that has been arisen in the previous years so this that can be derived with the help of a technique called the classical optimization technique so here when we talk about a classical optimization technique there are three problems we do have 
So the first one is the functions. So the what are the functions we are going to use? Those function as a continuous one or a differentiable one or a non-continuous one, and those functions which impacts your designing of the processes. So the designing of an equipment or designing of an experiment, DOE. So this method assumes that the function is differentiable twice with respect to that design variable and the derivatives which are a continuous one. And when we talk about a single variable functions, and uh, which means that what are the functions that we are going to make the function as a single and non-continuous or a variable but the next one is a multivariable functions with no constraint. So here in this case of a multivariable functions with no constraints in the sense there are various factors which will be keeping in a mind that has to be modified in a various form without any difficulties. Okay, so the next one is the multivariable functions with both equality and inequality constraints. So, which means that uh, we are talking about a differentiable one. Okay, that is a variable function. So, variable functions that has to be done, which which consists of both the equality and inequality constraints. So, constraint in the sense there is a problem in a certain sense. Okay, so there should be of an equality problem, or it should not be no without the any problem that has to be arisen. And this method, so this uh, finally, this classical optimization technique that leads to a set of a non-linear simultaneous equation. So when you talk about a non-linear simultaneous equation, if it has been derived, it will not solve any solutions for the particular problem. Because uh, when we derive the problem that has to be in a uh, linear form, then we can derive a solution for that particular issues. But here in this case, since it's of a non-linearity in a nature of an equation, we cannot able to derive due to the variable functions we are being using as a multivariable functions or a single variable functions. So the next one is said to be the numerical method of optimization. So the second type is said to be the optimization method by using your numerical method. So when you talk about a numerical methods, what are the various uh, uh, equations that we have been used as a form we are going to see. The first one is a linear programming. So here in this case of a linear programming, uh, in this short, if you are having a set, Okay, so the studies in which the case in which the objective function f is a linear one and the set A is specified using only this linear equalities and an inequalities. So here the set A is said to be the design space. So when we are designing any equipment or an experiment, the DOE, when you talk about the, we'll be setting a one variable space called a design variable space that is a set A. So here, this involves a case in which the objective function is said to be the linear, by, which has been based on a set A, which using the linear equalities as well as the inequalities. Then the second type is an integer programming. So the integer programming in the sense, here the study is linear program in which some of all the variables are constrained to take on an integer values. So the programming that has to be done that is the optimization programming that has to be done based on a linear equation for which, which your the studies that deals with the linear program in which all the variables are constrained to take on an integer values. The third one is a quadratic program. So when you talk about a quadratic programming, it allows the objective functions to have a quadratic terms. The quadratic terms in the sense we will be having n number of your variables in which the set A has to be specified with the linear equalities as well as the inequalities. So it allows your objective functions to be have a quadratic terms. The fourth one is a non-linear programming. So the non-linear programming, the name itself, it indicates the programming, optimization programming technique, which will not be in a linear form. It will be in a non-linear form. So that is uh, generally we can say in which the objective functions or a constraints are both contain the non-linear part of your factors or a variables. Then stochastic programming. So the stochastic programming in the sense in which the studies, the case in which some of the constraints that will be depend on a random variables. So let us take in our first set of an experiment, the one variable will be affecting your process. If we do the second, uh, second repeatedly second time, if the, in, uh, in that first factor, what has been affected in the first trial, we will not be affecting the product formation in the second. So there will be some other factor which will be affecting. So that is said to be the stochastic in a 
manner. So here, the splitting the problems into smaller subproblems. So to solving a problem, uh, the solutions to do it derived, we are going to split the problem into a small subproblems that has to be repeated early, uh, do it in again and again for uh, carrying out or for uh, finding the solutions for it. That is said to be the stochastic programming, the case in which some of the constraints that has been dependent on a random variable. The next one is your combinatorial dynamic program. So here in this case of a combinatorial dynamic programming, the, the in which the studies is based on which the stack, what basis or oh sorry, what optimization strategy we are going to use among all these things. So whether we are going to use a linear and an integer combination or a integer or a quadratic combination or a linear or a quadratic combination or a uh, non-linear and a stochastic pro programming, what type of a dynamic programming, uh, sorry, what type of a combinations we are going to use for the particular study, that type of a thing uh, we are going to combine. So we call it as a combinatorial dynamic programming. The next one is an optimization. So as we all know, the optimization is not a screening technique. We are going to define the particular product in a perfect, effective, functional for a longer period of a time. So the optimization is concerned with the problem where the set of a feasible solution is discrete or can be reduced to a discrete one. So here there should not be any number of disadvantages or any number of demerits or any number of issues that should not be there. It should be having only the results or a problems is solving or a solved solution that has to be there to be in a single form. Okay, so the next one is an infinite dimensional optimization. So the name is that indicates the infinite dimensional op optimization in the sense <clears throat> there is a study the case when the set of a feasible solution is a subset of an infinite dimensional space. So here in this case, uh, it's said to be there are uh, in, if you are carrying out any process, the process that can be affected by the various factors. Right, so we will not know which factor is affecting that particular optimization process. So we have to study each and every factor which is said to be the subset of that thing which is affecting the particular reactions to be carried out for a particular process. So we call that as an infinite dimensional optimization that is a study is the case in a set of a feasible solution is said to be the subset of an infinite dimensional space such as the space of a function. Then the constraint satisfaction. So the next one is a constraint satisfaction in which the study is the case in which the objective function is said to be the constant that can be used in an AI, which means that it can be used in a various automated reasoning techniques. So here, uh, constraint satisfaction in the sense there will be your restrictions of using that dynamic programming for the particular satisfaction. So the studies which will be involved in this case is said to be the constraint satisfaction where your objective function is said to be the constant. This type of a thing that has been used in the case of an artificial intelligence. So when you talk about the advantages of all this uh, optimization technique, whether the linear or a dynamic, okay. So here in this case, uh, there will be a various generation information on product development can be derived. The prediction of a direction of an improvement can be done and it has been helped to design the optimum conditions for the formulation of a particular process to produce a product in an efficient manner or in a qualitative as well as also in a quantitative manner. So that can be derived with the help of your optimization techniques, either in the form of a linear or a dynamic. That is said to be the merits. When you talk about a demerits, the uh, process that cannot be making it as an optimized one once only when it has been done once. Okay, so it has to be done repeatedly on a number of uh, times so that we need to optimize with a particular. So for an example, in a chemistry lab, we used to titer uh, n number of uh, times. Almost we do uh, three number of uh, times repeatedly to make a concurrent value. Right. So here in this also for optimization, we should not stop only when we have been tried once. It has to be repeated minimum of a number of times from five to the 10. In the case of a research work also we used to do, right? We will not repeat it. We are not sick to the only one result. We will be doing it again and again to get the uh, results. Right. So here in this case, the more repetition is the uh, record.
and because of this uh, more repetition it takes a lot of time for getting the optimization strategies and it is not efficient to finding the true optimum so for one it will be giving your uh, b as a major factor which is involving in the formation of product okay and then if we are doing it again by time taken and if we do in day it will tell that the a has been acted on a particular product formation or d will be acted on a particular product formation as a substrate for a product formation so we cannot able to predict the true optimum that is why we call it as a to finding a true optimum is not an efficient one and when we are doing it repeatedly it is said to be the time consuming so it is said to be the expensive one okay so the next one we move on to the dynamic programming so when we talk about a dynamic programming here it is said to be an optimization approach that transforms your complex problem into the sequence of a simpler problem so uh, the problem whatever we do have we are going to divide the problem into a small number of a problems that is a subgroups of your problems so that is why we are going to transform that complex problem into a sequence of a simpler problems okay so here in this case more so than the optimization technique that has been described previously that is said to be your uh, linear dynamic programming when compared to it the dynamic programming that provides you the general framework for analyzing the problem types so we are not sticking into the particular problem which has been arisen to make the solutions to be arrived here because of this we are substituting sorry or we are dividing the particular problem into a sequence of a simpler problem so we are naming that dynamic programming said to be the general framework for analyzing the what are the various problems we do have in a obtaining a solutions for a particular various problems so within this framework so this framework which will be giving you the variety of an optimization techniques that can be employed to solve the particular aspects for a general formulation so here when we all do this thing the creativity is required in this case of a dynamic program so we are going to break a big problem into a smaller subgroups of a problem so we will be deriving which is acting the particular uh, which is uh, making the problem to be derived so that for it has been uh, impacted in the solution formation or it can be say uh, for a product formation so here in this case once it has been divided it is easy for us to understand which has been uh, in impacted more on a product formation for deriving the solution right so here in this case we need a lot of a creativity to recognize that particular problem that affects your problem so that it will be arriving in a solution so we can be so here usually the creativity is required so that it can be recognized for your particular problem as a dynamic program uh, that necessary to restructure the formulation that can be solved effectively okay so that is how the difference between your linear and a dynamic or linear problem will be taking the sub, uh, we are not going to divide the problem to derive the solution uh, into the sub problems we are going to make whereas in the case of a dynamic programming we are making the problem to be sub divided into a sub groups for deriving the solutions that can be solved effectively by formulating and uh, because of that your creativity has been increased so here uh, as a simple term we can tell the dynamic programming said it's a collection of a methods for solving the sequential decision making problems okay for making a decision making uh, problems that is decision making uh, what is the decision making that can be done based on a sub group of a problems and this methods are based on the decomposing a multi stage problem into the sequence of a in interrelated one stage problem and uh, the fundamental to this is the principle or is based on a principle of optimability optimality in the sense that we are making the optimum production of a particular product by utilizing the maximum of a substrate right for a party, any product so this type of a dynamic programming or a linear programming it uses a basic principle of your optimality and this optimality is has been developed by the richard bellman in the year of 1950 so here uh, so we call him as a father of a principle of a optimality so here in this case uh, and when you talk about a dynamic programming this is said to be the multi stage involved for deriving 
the solution for a single problem okay so we are because we are making the problem into a small groups of a problem so it will be related to give you the solutions for a entire problem what it is okay so and it is important is that the optimal solution for a multi set problem can be found by solving a functional equation relating the optimal so here we are going to make the equation in a linear form so that uh, we are going to derive the solutions for that one for making the optimal value so when you talk about a linear programming it is a simple technique where we can depict the complex relationship through the simpler function linear form of an equation so in a mathematical we have been known that uh, y is equal to mx plus c for is said to be the uh, linear form of an equation for any parabolic equation for any equation we will be deriving the linear form of equation y is equal to mx plus c for finding the optimal value so here in this case this linear programming is said to be the simple technique so that the complex relationship through that uh, linear function where we can find the optimum point so we'll be finding so in the bio process we might have been seen what is the uh, 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 specific growth rate value what is the maclis menten constant what is the yield coefficient so these and all can be uh, found out using the linear form of an equation using the technique called a linear program so this type of a programming that will be installed in the case of a, so in the form of a software in the pc so that can be run and instead of manually deriving what is the uh, value for the particular uh, uh, cases or a problem we will be uh, making that uh, programming in a uh, optimization strategies for in a system for taking the value so the important word in the previous sentences have been depicted in this year through the linear function the optimum point can be obtained the real relationship might be more complex but we have to simplify them to the linear relationship so the next one is the optimization strategies. So when you talk about the optimization strategies, the process systems engineering faces an increased demand for a better process model. So this type of your uh, where we can use this dynamic or a linear uh, programming in the sense here we will be using in the case of a various bioprocess modeling. Okay, so the next one is a uh, large scale nonlinear programming strategy has been extended the discovery for the real time problems whatever we do have for that the solutions can be derived using this linear or a dynamic programming okay so this type of a strategies that can be implemented in all the cases of an industries so whatever the food industry is pharma industries bioprocess chemical industries or petrochemical industries. so any type of an industries they will be using all the optimization strategies for their product formulation Okay, so here when you talk about for this real world of this one, uh, we'll be debating with the help of a three cases. So the first case is about your, if we are taking a one for a product formation that has been failed, but that one that has to be taken as a um, input for the problem uh, for the solutions to derive from the particular problem. So that is said to be the first case. So as a result, the optimization is based on the repeated simulation typical fails and those simultaneous equations based approach must be applied to derive the solutions for the particular problem. In the second case, it has to be considered as an optimal operating policies for a great transition in a polymer processes. The third is we are going to consider this as an optimization strategies for the integration of scheduling under dynamic process operations for a general as well as a continuous as well as your batch processes. So this type of an optimization strategies we can implement in the case of your implement in the case of your uh, various uh, mode of an operations if you are using in the case of a reactor so either it might be the uh, continuous batch of a reactor or a batch process mode of an operation or a fed batch mode of an operation or a uh, continuous tank of a reaction so here uh, we demonstrate this effectiveness of a dynamic optimization on a three phase studies for a real world reactive processes the first is said to be we are going to take the failure as a step for the success right so here we are going to take the failure as a source for deriving the solutions for the particular problem so that the equations we are going to take and apply in the form of a linear form of an equation so in the second case it's said to be the uh, all the operating policies for your great transition in the sense for making the process to be in a uh, deriving the solutions by basically taking that uh, problem as a basic input okay and the third one is considering the optimization strategy for the integration of scheduling and dynamic process operations for a continuous and a general 
batch mode of an operation. So here in this case, for any product that has been carried out in the case of a large scale industry, either in the form of a pharma or a food or a petrochemical or a chemical unit, if you take, we have to uh, keep on running the same process again and again to get the optimized product. So here in this case, the product we are going to take then that the process we are going to uh, carry it out that process can be in a various mode like a batch or a fed batch or a continuous or a, a continuous a state or a form or a submerged of a fermentation process so what process we are going to design so that in which you are the dynamic programming and linear programming that has to be applied for uh, deriving the solutions Okay, so the next this method introduces a discrete time formulation for a simultaneous optimization of scheduling and an operating decision. So here in this case, when you talk about uh, this method, which will be introduces a time constraint since it is taking it doing a repeatedly, so it takes a time consuming one, but we need to optimize this on a number of a basis time. So the scheduling time and operating uh, decisions, it has to be done based on that. Okay, so here the method introduces a discrete time formulation for a simultaneous optimization of scheduling and an operating decision. So for all these cases, we need to provide a summary of this direction and challenges for a further investigation of this task and extension in optimization formulation and a strategy. So all these cases, we need to provide a summary. We have to repeatedly do a uh, process that has to be carried out to get an optimized uh, solution for a particular problem in order to take all uh, solutions for the particular problem if the process is being carried out in any mode of an operation either it might be the batch or a fed batch or a continuous form of an operations okay so here uh, when you talk about a linear or a dynamic programming uh, the uh, dynamic programming plays a major role in the case of your optimization strategies because it is giving you the lot of an information since we are dividing the problems into a smaller group of problems to derive where the problem it lies for deriving the solutions based on the problem. Whereas in the case of a linear programming, the linear programming in which your whatever the dynamic programming problems we do have, there's a solution. And that solution, we are going to make it in a linear form to determine what is the optimal value for the particular process. So in that thing, what are the various cases that has to be considered in the sense, it has to be repeatedly to be carried out by taking the failure as a input to derive the solution for a particular problem. And it has to be optimized for a particular policies. And third one, for any type of an operations we are carrying out, the optimization strategies, it has to be follow so why we need to do all these things it has to be done for any uh, problems that have to be arisen in the case of a future so that the future integration of this all these tasks and extensions can be formulated optimizingly as well as in the strategies that has to be followed thank you